today will be a real treat. We have Dr. Karen Tilstra directly from California, and we have Andy Tilstra, who is in Orlando, Florida this morning, and uh, they're going to talk to us about creating cultures that create. So I'll do a brief bio on, on both of them. Karen Tilstra holds a doctorate in innovation and transformation and is a licensed educational psychologist. Karen has helped businesses, universities, government, and healthcare organizations create innovation labs and develop their innovation teams. She believes we need to stop taking ourselves so seriously. So we're going to look for some fun here in the morning, at least in the United States, even in other parts of the world. Um, Andy Tilstra got his Master's of Social Science Anthropology from the University of Chicago. He has done research on public space in Chicago and how it relates to power dynamics. Andy runs a podcast that has over 10,000 downloads. So Andy, looking forward to checking your podcast one of these days. But for now, very, very grateful for that both you and Karen can uh, take the time to be here with us and share your expertise with us. We're very much looking forward to your presentation. Awesome, thank you. We're very excited to be here around the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you for that introduction, Jose. Um, yeah, let's just jump straight in to the don't be a crow, the power of yes and. Um, you kind of got the introduction of us already. Uh, my name's Andy, and this is Dr. Karen Tilstra. Right, and we're excited today to be with you because working with a lot of places and developing innovation labs and innovation teams, one thing we've noticed is that culture cannot change unless people are open to ideas. And if they can tolerate new ideas just for a moment and let them grow, culture starts begin, beginning to change. And so today we wanna to share a metaphor with you of how we oftentimes destroy ideas, shoot them down, and we shoot our own ideas down. So how to, uh, we wanna give you a slight metaphor a small metaphor with two tools that will help you to keep ideas alive. So the don't don't be a crow, the power of yes and. So what is a crow? Well, a, a crow, crow, oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Andy. No, 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 go ahead, Andy. <laughs> a crow is an acronym that we identified in participants in a meeting who operate from a place of de reactionary defensiveness when they feel threatened and and we chose a crow uh, for the acronym, but also crows like to attack shiny things. And <laughs> new ideas can be very shiny and they can blind people. So yeah, the crow is our acronym for what does it stand for, Andy? Well, the crow stands for these four needs. The first one is the need to be in control. The second one is the need to be right. And the third one is the need to stay objective. And the fourth one is the need to win. Now, these qualities can sound something like this. So for the need to be in control. I'll take care of it. Well, let me think about it and I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. The need to be right. Well, that'll never work. Or the famous, we haven't done that before, sounds risky. <laughs> the need to stay objective. Where's the data? Or I don't need, I don't mean to be cynical, but. And then the need to win. Yeah, this one, if you can't win, you certainly aren't going to lose. So this is, if you want to do such something, but do it, but I'm not going to help. Or remember, never argue with the boss. Mm -hmm. And these are qualities, I think, that is common to human nature. However, mm -hmm. when they're exhibited in a reactionary defensive standpoint, they can really minimize the space. So to really show an example of the crow, we want to show you to a friend of ours, Carl, a team leader. Carl was a, is a really great guy. He is a popular leader on most cases. And he actually works for an organization that every summer they have a retreat. And Carl answers to the, the main guy, the CEO, and he takes they take turns with the, down, the reports, who reports to the CEO uh, gets to plan the retreat. So there's six of them. So once every six years, they get to plan the retreat. So this year was Carl's. And so he thought, well, I'll get the team involved with this. And the team was thrilled to be a uh, part of planning this really important retreat. And they really worked. They called places, they checked out places, they talked to people, they interviewed people, what makes a dynamic retreat. Retreat. They even wanted to do a few things a little differently than had been done before. And so they really had done their homework. 
and the time came for the meeting to report to Carl, and everybody was excited. Carl was excited too. And when the team began sharing, Carl suddenly found himself feeling a little out of control. And so these were new ideas. So he started, his defense started to rise. And as they came up, the team came up with ideas that hadn't been tried before or were different from last time. He felt threatened again, like, wow, I need to be right here. And they were getting so excited and he felt they were, they were just exhibiting too much emotion and we need to be objective. And then he felt, I can't afford not to come out on top. And so he just shut everything down. The team was surprised, hurt, and felt really betrayed by Carl. But the truth was, Carl himself felt he had betrayed the team. And people left the meeting and Carl went back to his office and thought, wow, why did I do that? And he actually was confused because he hadn't intended to destroy the team's spirit. But what Carl didn't realize is by shutting down ideas because he needed to be in control, needed to be right or say objective, he lost all the way around. So actually what the crow doesn't realize is tr cultural transformation happens when you create an ecosystem like he had created. But when the ecosystem started to roll, his ego took over and an ego system went into place. So everybody lost. So what can you do if that happens? Right. And first I want to ask, have you ever been a crow or have you ever exhibited these qualities in a meeting with others? Um, I believe we have a poll here um, that we can say this out. Um, also, I don't know if, there, if there's just chat, we could also just put in the chat. I don't know if that would disrupt what we already have, Jose, but um, this is just a, a little uh, question I want to give out to the attendees. Have you ever been a crow? Very good. So we're going to run that poll right now for the audience. Have you ever been a crow? Have you ever been a crow? So I'm launching that right now. So the poll is open. So audience, please go ahead and choose one of the options. These are these are very straightforward options. You have yes, no, <laughs> yeah. or maybe. Yeah. So right. go ahead and start voting. Um, start voting. Have you ever been a crow? Uh, do you have this, the, you know, this need to be in control, they need to be right, they need to be objective, and they need to win. So if <laughs> yes, no, or maybe. So right. we have about 40% of the audience voting at this point. Keep, good job. Keep going, keep going. Cool. I'm going to give another five seconds here <laughs> to see how many crows we have in our audience. <laughs> if anyone answers no, I think we should reconnect after this to see what you're doing right, because... Oh. I that, that's we an incredible so attribute. All right, all right. <laughs> Two more <laughs> seconds here. Yeah. Hit the poll. Just hit the poll vote. Uh, poll option there. Excellent. All right, all right. We have over eighty percent of you voting. <laughs> Outstanding. So I'm gonna close it now, and I'm gonna share these results. Um, I don't. So sure. here's what we. Ha I I think Karen or Andy, are you? Can you can yeah. you talk yeah. through the results? I can see it. Yes. Karen, so we Karen. want to. Uh, uh, say to the 52% of yeses and the 35% of, of maybes, welcome. We're welcome to the human race. You're human. And we would love to find out about the no's, how they actually have been able to live their life like that. They could teach us something. Right. So, um, yeah, so being a, a crowing ideas is, is very much human nature. So anyway, yeah, thanks everybody for voting. Okay. So, Andy. Awesome. So we've kind of exhibited what the qualities of a crow are. That's control, the need to be right, need to stay objective, and the need to win. Now we want to also, in this presentation, give you some tools on how to deal with crowing both external and internal. So the first tool is ka, and the second one is called fly. The first one is ka, and that is how to speak the crow's language. It's how to bring everyone into the conversation. This third, the second one is fly, and that's how to rise above your own self-doubts to reach higher and newer places. Now, first, before we go into these tools though, we need to introduce you to Carlito, a Crow recipient. Now, Carlito was working on a new program, a new uh, coding program, and his team had been given this challenge, this project, and they'd been working on it for a while, and he had had a breakthrough and had a great idea that was a little off the beaten path. So he called the team together at the next meeting, and he presented his idea with enthusiasm and excitement but was met with some crow responses. 
how is that going to work? What does this mean? We haven't done this before. That sounds so risky. Are you sure that even fits within our strategic alignment? And Carlito was starting to feel like the crows were descending on him, attacking his shiny new object, new idea. And he would have been completely de uh, defeated if he didn't know the tool Ka. So using this tool, which we'll go over in a second, he brought the crows into a conversation. He caught his breath. He paused. He acknowledged the crows' concerns and brought them into the conversation. And then he threw what we call a what-if party to then generate ideas around the concerns and input that were brought together by the crows. By doing this, Carlito and this group were able to improve on Carlito's idea and rise to a new outcome that was inclusive for all people, crows, non-crows, and just everyone included, and able to create the future that was needed to happen. It wasn't exactly what Carlito brought forward, but it was something that all had an input and had, had um, influence over. Now, that was Carlito. But before we go over Ka, the tool, we want to ask you first for our second poll, <laughs> have you ever been crowed? Have you ever been the recipient of someone trying to control, someone trying to be objective, trying to uh, be right, and trying to win? I believe the, the poll is now open. I see a little notification. Um, and just answer that. We'll take, take about 15, 20 seconds. Have you ever seconds. been crowed? Have you been on the, <laughs> on the other end of the crow? Uh, so the answer is here again, yes, no, or maybe. Have you had your ideas shut down? Have you been, have you been uh, on the other side of a crow? So uh, <laughs> go ahead and vote, and uh, I will keep an eye on the votes here. Well done. You're, you're, everybody's becoming so efficient voting now. Now we are over 50% <laughs> of you have already voted. Well done. Give Wonderful. you 10 more seconds here to share with us if you have ever been crowed before. So uh, go ahead and complete your vote. Take one of these three options, please. Uh, we know these polls are really um, confounding and very complicated. <laughs> so we wanna give you the, a mental space to really complete these. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, five more seconds before I close the poll. Well done, everyone. So I'm closing it now and sharing the results. All righty. So we have 95% of you have been crowed, uh, <laughs> zero for no, and 5% for maybe. So again, welcome to the human race. Getting ideas shot down is so, <laughs> it's so common, but it's so important that we learn some tools to actually create space for ideas to breathe, because that's where culture starts to change. Cultural transformation mm -hmm. needs new ideas. So we've all been crowed then, except a few of us, which is- uh, <laughs> Well, those are, are maybe, so maybe uh, they can't remember. Right, so time. either they have um, not entered the workforce yet, or um, <laughs> they are very positive and maybe haven't surrounded by it. Yeah, surrounded yeah. by collaborative, supportive so, uh, coworkers. Anyway, we've all been there. So again, we've created this metaphor to help you in when getting crowed happens very quickly. So. Learn to speak the crow's language with ka, C-A-W. <clears throat> Just catch your breath. Just create some space. Then acknowledge their concerns. That's the best thing you can do when someone's directly attacking your idea or even coming from the side and attacking your idea. Just acknowledge their concerns. And then we say, invite them to a what if party. So mm -hmm. catching your breath, what does that look like, Andy, to catch your breath? Well, it just looks like pausing and then breathing. And while this may be, it's literal, it's also metaphorical because it's allowing space both for conversation and a future to emerge that may be organic and needs to emerge. Mm -hmm. And take a moment to acknowledge the concerns. Now, when ideas are getting shot down, that's kind of like feedback. And we always consider feedback a gift and there's no such thing as bad feedback, believe it or not. Feedback is just information. So when people are shooting down your ideas, you are actually getting some feedback. So this is why it's so important to acknowledge their concerns. It could sound something like this. It sounds like we're afraid that we could fail. Why is that? Or what happens if we do fail? Are you feeling the idea is too risky? Could you tell me more about that? And just creating some space and then 
throw the best what if party ever. Now, <laughs> what is that, Andy? They might say, wait, what is? Well, a what if party <laughs> is a simple exercise we've created where we invite all into a generative creative space where all ideas start with the two words, what if? And this isn't what if everything goes wrong. It's what if everything goes, <clears throat> excuse me. It's what if everything goes right. It's a positive outlook on the future. We're not looking for cynicism here. We're looking for positivity and optimism. What if my fears aren't confirmed and we actually do succeed? What would that look like? What would need to happen for that to happen? So. What, how to throw a what if party. It's just <laughs> a, like a four minute thing. And maybe the first time you do this, it might feel awkward, but actually it's a form of activating or um, moving on the feedback you've gotten. So mm -hmm. something like, wow, it sounds like, um, my idea has scared you or that my idea might sound like it's not aligning with the goals of the organization. So uh, can we just take a minute and have you, uh, each of you in the group, like at this table here, these crows here, um, think of as many what ifs in the positive about the idea. Let's just think, what if the idea worked? What if uh, it went forward? What could that look like? Give everybody one minute and then after, and just hold it to one minute, sharp. When one minute's done, close it down. Okay, 30 seconds each person gets to share their idea, to share their what if. And then after each person is shared for 30 seconds, then take about two minutes to see the next steps. It, it sounds like maybe we have some more feedback on the idea. It sounds like maybe people have thought, taken a different direction or added to the idea, built upon the idea. The key is ideas are just little bursts of inspiration. They're starting points. And rarely is your first idea your best idea. So you want to create a space. Uh, so this is a cultural transformation here. Create a space that ideas can actually start to expand. Or if someone builds on an idea, they might take it in a different direction. So we want to encourage everyone to throw a what if party if you've been crowed. And it might sound a little sappy or a little, wow, I'm really going to do that. Just try it. And try it with some words like this. It sounds like the idea is not working. Could you give me a few minutes just to imagine what the idea could look like or what idea might, where it might morph into? And what we have found is most people will say, yeah, I'll try it. And it really energizes the team. It brings a lot of, uh, it increases motivation and everybody wants to give an idea. Uh, that's just human nature. We love to give our ideas. We love to give advice. We love to give our opinions. And so this is just a way to do it. And once people start to understand this is a tool that can be used in big meetings, small meetings, it starts to be very helpful. So we want to encourage you to throw a what if party and never let it run more than five minutes. Four minutes is optimum. So awesome. that's the what if so, party. Thank you so much, Karen. That is the what if party. Um, it's a nice tool exercise. And we've talked so far up to this about what happens when crowing is from an external source or even internal. So uh, what happens when you're the crow or what happens when other people are crowing your ideas? So we want to ask another question. Uh, this isn't a poll, but what happens when you crow your own ideas? Now, this is sometimes the worst or the most intense crowing of all, because sometimes we can be our greatest internal critics because no one else will see that. No one else will see the, the intensity of how we can shut our own selves down. So to explain this, we want to uh, introduce you to Carlotta and the icebreaker. Yes, here's Carlotta. Oh, Andy has done all the artwork. I want to give a little shout out to him. He's <laughs> created all these. Um, Carlotta was a is great worker, and she was part of a the middle management that every month they had a middle management uh, kind of report of how it's going, where our goals, where are we with the goals and that kind of thing. So the meeting tended to get a little heavy on data and charts and that kind of thing. And so Carlotta had the idea about gamifying one portion of the, of the meeting where data was being presented. So she went and talked to some IT guys. She talked to a couple of friends who are big gamers and they worked out a, a way that the audience could participate in gamifying the way they did data. She was so excited. This was going to be awesome. We were going to be able to, she said, we're going to be able to make this meeting a little more dynamic, which it needed to happen. But the morning of the meeting, she started thinking as she drove to work, wow, that, uh, well, this idea sounds so stupid. They're going to think I'm just really, out to lunch. And so the more she thought about it, she thought, I can't do this. This is just so silly. I don't, my boss will fire me if I do this. So she was in her 
office. She got to her office and it was about 20 minutes before the meeting started. One of her coworkers came by and said, well, Carletta, are you ready for the meeting? And she said, well, no, I was, but now it's, I'm not feeling so great about it. And the coworker asked her what's going on. And she said, well, I had this idea, I had to kind of spruce up the meeting and add some more energy to it, but it just sounds so stupid. No, I'm not going to do it. And the coworker said, well, tell me, what's the idea? Anything's got to be better than what we do. And so she shared the, the gamification idea and the coworker said, this is awesome. You got to do this. And that gave her the courage to actually go ahead and try it. And so when the meeting came, she tried it. People loved it. They were engaged and they made the comments. We got to do this every time. Let's, this is awesome. They had better uh, participation. People left the meeting energized. So Carletta had experience growing her own idea. And thankfully a coworker had pulled her out of that ditch. Now, if the coworker hadn't come by, if she had only known how to fly her ideas, she might've been okay on her own. Mm -hmm. So that brings up the next question we want to ask you guys. Uh, have you ever crowed your own ideas? Have you ever unintentionally controlled or stayed objective or wanted to be right, or even wanted to win with your own self by, by saying, Oh, that's, that's stupid. That I, that we've never done that before. I don't right. want to rock the boat or, ah, that or seems what, like too much energy. Or what sounded so great the day before, just before the meeting starts, the presentation starts, it's like, ah, this isn't going to work. Or you just <laughs> totally think it's stupid. So the poll is now open. Have you ever crowed your own ideas? So go ahead and vote. Have you done that yourself? The options are yes, no, and maybe. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and take a vote on have you ever crowed your own ideas? I also, I saw in the chat, there was a, a question asked by Janice, um, a lovely question. I would, me and Karen, I think would love to answer that. I think we will approach that on the Q and A because that, that is, that's probably one of the biggest criticism we get. Well, criticism, the biggest feedback we get uh, by explaining this. Um, so would love to approach that um, at the end of the Q and A. Excellent. About 70% of you have voted. So I'm going to give another five seconds here for the remaining 30% to make up their minds. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it needs they, a lot of. Do not uh, crow. They are they are actively crowing their idea on how to vote right <laughs> hey, now. There we go. Culturally, we now have a new vernacular, a new yeah. symbolism for this. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Excellent. So we got the votes here. I'm gonna close the poll and I'll share the results. We have 67% um, said yes. We've crowed our own ideas again. Welcome to the human race. 8% said no, and I oh. think we'd love to hear from you how you uh, stop from doing that. And then 25% mm -hmm. says maybe. So this is, I love seeing these responses. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for those. Yeah, um, and we also, we, we really designed this, this presentation to be a conversation starting point. This is no, by no way a law. Like the, this is just mm -hmm. a starting point for conversation and just awareness of our own thinking and others thinking. Right. And also it's a way to cr possibly create some new language and mm -hmm. cultures change as ideas start to emerge and they turn into language and we get new language and we're, then cultures begin to shift. Exactly. So, okay. Um, how do we fly our ideas? So it's Carlotta, very if she had, thank you. If, if Carlotta had these, <laughs> these tools, this tool in her tool belt, maybe she wouldn't have needed the external affirmation to get to that point. So fly is an acronym for three words, F L Y. The F stands for to have faith in your idea. The L stands for to take the leap. And the Y stands for adopt a yes and attitude. Now this may seem simple, but these are the three things are very critical to having faith and like jumping into innovation and, and cultural transformation. So the F having faith in your idea can sound like this. To actually embrace the fact that you're creative. That's something people say, oh, not me. I'm not creative. Everyone's creative. And so just have faith to, to let your idea live a little. Mm -hmm. The L, take the leap, can sound like this. Uh, believe in your ideas. Uh, don't rob from the outcome. It's very easy for us to rob from the outcome. So we project ourselves to after everything's happened and, okay, like Carlotta. Okay, they're going to think I'm stupid when it's done. No, she actually robbed from the outcome. So 
don't rob from the outcome because you're not there yet. Let it just emerge. And one way to do this is we know taking a leap is fearful. So you need to leap afraid. And uh, mm -hmm. Andy, uh, you have a little saying about that. The oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Elise Nichols, uh, Lisa Nichols, I believe. Uh, leap afraid because you're going to hit the ground anyway. So you might as well start sooner than later. <laughs> and do what you wanted to do. And then the last one, adopt a yes and attitude. Just to be able to say yes and. And uh, yes and is really at the crux of pretty much everything when it comes to uh, stepping into ideas or embracing ideas. Mm -hmm. And yes and is a... Um, something we can all do it's allows for space for ideas to emerge and it allows for us to uh suspend judgment and to uh actually let a new future start yes hand comes out of improv and it's really um uh, oftentimes very misunderstood people oftentimes think yes and means oh, i just have to just say yes all the time no it doesn't mean that at all yes and has three components to it Yes, sir. Um, what is a yes and mindset? The key is you don't have to agree with what's being said. Not at all. You can add to the conversation by suspending negative judgment. So how could this look? So oftentimes when we're talking and somebody starts to disagree with us, we just shut down or we roll our eyes or say whatever. But in this case, like we talked about caw and flying, you actually step into that. Yes means I'm creating space and means I'm going to add to the conversation, even if it's not going how I want it to go or I feel I've, um, I don't agree with what's happening. And means adding to the idea, building on the ideas of others, uh, building on what's being said. And you can go in many directions on this. It doesn't mean you have to flatly refute, uh, refute the person just to add to the conversation. Now space is starting to be created. And remember, First ideas are rarely the best ideas. So by suspending judgment, you're able to create space and remain in the conversation. And as long as you're in the conversation, things can change. It's when we stop talking that things don't change. And remember, conversation is still the best problem solving tool. So by our metaphor of the crow, caw and fly, it's just a tool to help create space for people to stay in conversations and actually start to see transformation happen. Awesome. And yes, and is almost the antithesis of the crow mindset. So mm -hmm. looking at our stories that we presented today, Carl did not say yes, and to himself or his team when, <clears throat> excuse me, his team brought forth ideas that he'd given them permission to do, but then he operated from a reactionary defensive standpoint and felt threatened. He and did the not key about Right. And sorry, the key about Carl was that he didn't feel good about what he did either. And he found himself asking, why did I do that? And th these are all real stories we're telling you. When Carl talked to me, he said, I don't know why I did that, but I couldn't help myself. But giving him a few tools and actually just understanding why we shoot down ideas is really helpful. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be in control. You don't always need to be right. It's okay if some things aren't objective. And winning is not always winning and losing is not always a defeat. So he didn't. Ha he was already winning with his team, but he just needed new eyes to see it. And that's where uh, cultural transformation is about creating a ecosystem, not an ego system, which is so easy to get into. But this is, you probably know that already actually. <laughs> Yeah, we don't. We say we don't present any new information, just a perspective of information we already know. Right, so, or present it in a different way. Yeah, exactly. So and Carlito with the with the crows, Carlito was able to say yes and because of the ca tools that he had, and he was able to bring the crows into a generative yes and conversation to include their input and then create the outcome that all felt they had responsibility and creation over. So that was Carlito's story. And Carlotta almost didn't uh, carry through with her idea that really gave people a wonderful experience. And fortunately for her, she had someone come by and encourage her. But next time she'll know that she can actually realize that new ideas are scary. And oftentimes we get hesitant to uh, put them out there. And so when you have a new idea, just understand it's probably going to be a little scary or right up before the presentation like even us we thought maybe this won't work we said let's just try it and remember your ideas won't 
hit everybody in a positive way. Some people might say, oh, okay, whatever. Some might say, no, I don't agree. Some will say, yeah, I really like that. So remember that you don't have to bat a thousand, but putting your ideas out there is a way to change the world. And then having some tools to be able to tolerate new ideas and embrace change is also the, the crux of uh, transformation in cultures. And conversation is, like I said, still the best problem solving tool. Mm -hmm. So, Andy, what do we have? Um, we now, now have we the have... yes and, oh, sorry, go keep going, Karen. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> we now have the yes and tools to deal with crows, both inside and out. Um, so, the, the, sorry, sometimes the reason me and Karen are so much other is we usually present with three people. So, we've had to kind of rearrange some of the um, transitions and We've and had ownership. to grow our idea. Of, <laughs> right. Yeah. So now that um, we have the tools, both yes and uh, yes and tools, caw and fly, we want to present with you our last poll, which we think is our favorite, which is this: is what spirit bird represents your ideal mindset? How can we reframe the crow into a more collaborative, innovative bird that might enable more conversation and collaboration? Right. So uh, this you might this might be our sappiest part, but. Um, <laughs> When you are coming into a situation where you are doubting your own self or other people are doubting you, we, uh, Andy drew up some birds here and we've, to characteristics of the birds, just to have a mental image of what, what can inspire me to actually stay in the conversation when I'm being crowed or I'm crowing myself. So Andy's uh, drawn out these birds and we want to invite you to choose the one that you actually resonate with the most. Do you want to tell the birds, Andy? Right, yeah. So first, our first uh, option, A, is the hummingbird, precise and quick. Second one, B, is the eagle, daring and courageous. The third one, C, is the peacock, charismatic and social. D, is the sun parakeet, bright and vibrant. And the fifth one, E, is penguin, who does things differently. Now, we have a poll for you. and want you to identify which one or ones. I don't know if the poll is optionary. You can create more options to see which of these birds you identify the most with. Um, take some time and think about that. And the next time maybe the crows are happening, the crows are descending, you can respond with your own bird mindset to then increase the input and increase the collaboration to have a more innovative outcome. So we have just launched the, the poll right now. Uh, what spirit bird do you relate to the most? And the poll in the poll says A, B, C, D, and E. And Andy, could you um, or Karen, uh, can you oh. uh, remind us what each one of these options mean again? Right. Right. So the first one is the hummingbird. Uh, so that's precise and quick for A. B is the eagle, daring and courageous. C is the peacock, charismatic and social. D is the sun parakeet, bright and vibrant. And E is the penguin who does things differently. I can repeat that again. So A no, is precise. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, all, all, all the birds around the world are voting already. So this is fantastic. <laughs> um, um, I will give you a few more seconds here. What bird are you? How half of you have voted at this point? I'll give you a few more seconds to select. And I know the decisions can be difficult because you can see <laughs> traits in different areas. And I think the yeah. poll allows only one selection. Oh, yeah. So right. just, just pick the one that, that best represents right. you. Yeah, we should have one where you could do A or B, B or C. Yeah, but, because yeah. every time we've done this, even with you, Jose, we did this before we started, you chose two of the birds, which I mean, that's awesome. Because yeah. you can't, I mean, this is kind of like, we talk about like Meyer Briggs tests or these like, behavioral tests and how they can sometimes limit or put you in a box right so, so we don't want to pitch it this is not to pigeonhole you oh we should have had the pigeon up there i learned yeah. this morning that i'm a confused bird <laughs> <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen so five more seconds here take a vote and we will close the poll mm -hmm. i'd love to get some of the to that question that janice said that um i think that's a very very good question um okay so um well before we, we have just one just one more slide i believe oh sorry yeah. you're going over the oh, polls wait, no. right okay so this is interesting i love this we don't have any hummingbirds interesting. we have uh 35 percent are eagles 30 percent are the peacock mm -hmm. and uh the sun parakeet nine percent and 26 percent are the penguins 
Awesome. Wow. All right. Poor hummingbird. Well, thanks. You know? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, you guys. So we, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, interesting to see. Interesting. We've noticed that the, the eagle usually gets the most. I mean, I wonder if that's because daring and courageous is usually seen as like more positive well, attributes. But the penguin gets a lot of votes into doing things differently. And also, I think it's reflective of uh, innovators are oftentimes daring and courageous and they do things differently. So sometimes mm -hmm. uh, we've read a you're really the first people we've tried this on. We did some beta testing and we saw a lot of the combination of eagle and penguin. So, mm -hmm. yeah, very good. OK, so we have just taken you through our metaphor of um, don't be a crow, um, in, uh, embracing yes and. And mm -hmm. thanks for joining us. And your, uh, remember, your ideas are worth hearing. Awesome. And yeah, thank so, you, guys. And we'll yeah, let's get we to that Q&A. Yeah. I can stop presenting now. Boop, boop, boop. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Yeah. Excellent. So <laughs> fantastic. So thank you so much. This uh, I'm looking at the questions now coming in. And please continue to submit your questions as Karen and Andy uh, engage us on the on the conversation now. Mm -hmm. All the birds from around the world uh, <laughs> coming in. And uh, so the first question that we had, and you, I think you saw even that one coming up, uh, Andy. Um, the the first question came from Janice Peters, and Janice asked, um, "Needing to think about a new idea seems to be reasonable if mm -hmm. there is no intent to curl the idea, but to give it some some." Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but my my screen moved as I was doing this. <laughs> oh. Hold on, uh, I was reading this. Someone curl my reading. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, my screen. Okay, if there is no intent to curl the idea, but to give it some thought before moving forward with the conversation, are there situations where there is a legitimate or appropriate, um, you know, curling, if you will? Yeah. And, and really, it's not driven by a desire to control. So right. if you can talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, that's always the case. Uh, in fact, when we're running uh, ideation sessions in our lab, we also have the the um, no uh, the no criticizing zone, and then we'll say, okay, let's go into a critical debate where you can just criticize the ideas. But I always think it's the intent of the person. So when mm -hmm. someone says, "Hey, are you like Carlotta?" you want to gamify that sounds really interesting i have you thought about people who might not have a uh, understanding about this or have you uh mm -hmm. considered that it might take more time those i wouldn't say are shutdowns you invite actually feedback and remember feedback is a gift there's no such thing as bad feedback Absolutely. it's just information so i think we're really talking about um what carl did and um we've we've had a We've been running that uh, one particular lab for 12 years and we get so this is what drove me to even create this kind of sappy metaphor that people would say wow you know sometimes we just can't get going people are jumping on ideas and shooting them down before we can even move so uh her janice was the name of the person who asked the idea yeah, yeah, yeah. so janice i love that you said that because this uh just engage them that, mm -hmm. that I wouldn't view that as crowing. I'd view that as someone who's really wanting to join in. And you can right. actually ask people. Um, it's I encourage people to say, "Now, uh, thanks for thanks for asking that," or "I really appreciate you asking that." Do you feel comfortable with the idea, or do you feel comfortable with any part of the idea? And what I have found is rarely are is anyone trying to do something from ill intent. Oftentimes it's like, oh boy, boy, we haven't thought of that. We don't have time. Oh, I don't want to upset the boss. I don't. I won't be back with the boss for two weeks. What am I going to do? It's more. It's always more about them anyway. If they're shooting your idea down, almost always. Absolutely. And so uh, I don't know if that answered your question, but that you just. I think it's staying engaged is the big thing. Yeah, um, and that's what Yes and really is all about. It's when things become uncomfortable or go down a, a route you didn't foresee that you don't react from that reactionary defensive point um also we want to be very clear this this crow series we're doing is not to ostracize people it's not to delineate that person's bad we need to keep them right. out of the meeting no no no. this is to increase to create a safe space for all people to be able to in be included mm -hmm. in the conversation crows and you know peacocks eagles hummingbirds and no then by including the crows sometimes the crows are your most valuable teammates yeah. sometimes those are the people that we have, have the found crows. we had a group in our uh in our lab that were they were redesigning part of a hospital and they were on a lake 
and interestingly enough the architect did not embrace the lake and so we had the contrarians come in uh, that's part of the innovation process that the, i love it you really is actually asking the crows to come in and the first question was how come you didn't consider the lake and the architect oh my gosh yeah so they were able to shift all their plans right. and move the hospital so now it's overlooking the lake so we are not actually devaluing the contrarians contribution what we're really talking about is a fear zone yeah and i've just seen it happen so many times and it's a, just a way to call just catch your breath affirm their ideas and then actually try to move people into let's and you don't have to actually say we're going to move to a what if party you can do that actually just by saying i'd like to hear more ideas i'd like to hear what you guys think about that that's mm -hmm. That's another way of doing it. So remember, it's always about opening the space and inviting people in. Exactly. Let's just think for a second. I think, because um, I know I said the crow is something sort of viable, but the whole point of this thing is not to be a crow. So to just to make some more information on that, the crow input is valuable, but when it's coming from a threatened standpoint, it can become, as Karen was saying, ego and not eco. When it's the, it was operating from the like me and myself and I, operating from the, the lowercase s of self, then people will operate from fear, they'll operate in a sense of controlling, and they'll try to hedge their own bets. But when we enter that generative space where it's an ecosystem, then all people's voices are valuable and all input's valuable because it's no longer about the person, it's about the idea. Then the ideas don't define the people. Right, and one thing I've learned, we've, had, we've run over 600 projects. When people start shooting down ideas, um, you can actually say, let's just take a break for a second. We come back, think about, uh, what's been said and is there other any ideas that are coming into play and just I cannot emphasize the, the how important creating space is and that's probably you probably know that already but just to take a moment create space invite people in and you can even say all feedback is welcome here and then you aren't allowing a, a crow type of situation to happen and mm -hmm. because I had an encounter with a high-level executive where he had um, presented some ideas and everybody was kind of like silent crows like okay he they were out in the hall and they were no more out in the hall saying this is so stupid this isn't going to work and he came to me and said oh my gosh what what have i done to allow to, to so that they didn't feel free to say anything so we did some kind of deep dive into that and he found that he had actually unadvertently or in, unknowingly been crowing everyone's ideas and they said we we were afraid to say anything to you he was so disappointed to learn that and he actually changed the way he operated mm -hmm. and i think that's a big thing too is to realize how we come across absolutely anyway so oh Ooh, jose you are muted it seems oh, yes i am i was a, i was a <laughs> silent bird for a moment here <laughs> so there are comments about what you just talked about and the and the and the system and the and uh, Jim DeVries specifically, who is a very experienced leader of large transformations, really yeah. zoomed on that. And he talked about how important what you just discussed, which is moving from an ego system to an ecosystem and uh, to an ecosystem. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's you, and you talked so well about that, Karen. Uh, we have another uh, commentary here and question from Arizu Sabe. And Arizu, um, talked about you discussed this a little bit about uh, as well and I and I she she wrote and there is a bit of a struggle with um, providing um, her point was that some people love to throw ideas at will right and they have yeah. no accountability for their ideas it's just like oh I had this idea and then kind of walk out of the room and uh, <laughs> so that's kind of the other extreme and yeah. uh, so based on that she thinks that there is some value on on you know talking about those ideas and and i know that ideas you know ideations about diverging and then later on we're going to converge mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. trying not to kill ideas too early exactly uh, but tell me a little bit about what is the right time to to stop the divergence and and start moving towards convergence mm -hmm. well i think um it's i see innovation as really a iterative process and you can just like when you're discovering about the problem you could keep and then you feel you've learned something then uh, as you move forward new information comes you learn again i feel the same with ideas i think there's always a time for new ideas there are times we say well we've got what we're doing we need to reach our goal but i feel like the iterative process allows for us to say oh it sounds like 
as we're meeting our moving forward, a new idea came in that might build on that idea. Mm -hmm. I think it's common sense in a way to say, we know where we want to go, but let's be open when new information comes. We can tweak, like Carlotta, she said, you know, we're going to run the meeting, we've been running the meeting, but I want to gamify something. Um, I, I think there's always time for new ideas. Now, in Carletta, Carlotta's case, she uh, her coworker helped her, but she could have actually beta tested that idea. She could have gone out and prototyped it with some people to yeah. actually give herself a little more courage and then also to see, does the idea work? She might have gotten some more ideas too. I think that ideas can always be in a parking lot too. Um, maybe it's so late in the process the project that they just need to get to a point of maybe testing or launching, launch a soft launch where things could be tweaked. And you can say, we're going to keep that idea for later. We're going to keep that idea and see how we can use it um, or apply it in a little different form or a different forum. Mm -hmm. um, I always think that save your ideas, but uh, also knowing ideas really, I, I think this can't be said enough. Ideas are just bursts of inspiration. Don't be married to your first idea. Embrace new ideas as they come and build on ideas. That's when ideas really start to take off. Yeah, I love that. I love that. The final uh, that 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 key message right there. Um, it's about building on ideas, and I think that our world need need builders. It's very yeah. easy to destroy. Yeah. Uh, it's much harder to build. And uh, you have presented a wonderful session on how to build. Karen and Andy, thank you so much for taking this insight, kind of a fun and incredibly valuable approach to break resistance in organizations, get others involved, and uh, and create uh, cultures that create and a culture of builders. And uh, so thank yeah. you so much for sharing this oh, with us. Oh, thank you. Morning. It's been an honor to be with you and all the people that we can't see. We are happy <laughs> to have met you and um, have a, a wonderful rest of the sessions. Awesome. Thanks for us so much. Thank you so much, Jose. Thank you, guys. We are so honored to be here, and good luck on the rest of the day. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, yes, and. <laughs> yes, and. Yes, yes and. and. We're yes, going to and. continue yes. by uh, <laughs> setting up our next session now. So at the top of the hour, we are going to invite Rizki Mohamed Ridwadan from Indoset Uridu, directly from Indonesia, to talk to us about developing regional agile digital squads and uh, he's talking he's going to discuss how that's the new normal way of working cultures so you do not want to miss his session we're going to stop we're going to start at the top of the hour and uh, we'll see you back then thank you